You're listening to Got Tech, the podcast with your hosts, Eric Geis and Nick Johnson. Hey, welcome back to another episode of Got Tech, the podcast. This is a special episode for a couple different reasons. One, you're not going to see a number next to it because really it's a bonus episode. It's a bonus because we aren't talking solely ed tech in this one. It's a bonus because we isn't me and Nick, it's me and Phil, and I'll get into that in a little bit. The third thing is, is we're just going to break down the Teach Better Conference. This would be a nice short episode that allows us to kind of tell everybody, you know, our takeaways from a conference. And this conference is different than any other conference that I've ever gone to. But I'm going to introduce my guest, Phil, here, who I met at the conference. Phil, what's going on? Tell everybody who you are, what you teach, and where you're from. Yeah. Hey, Eric, thanks for for having me on. It's great to be here. My name is Phil Strunk. I am a sixth grade history teacher in Loudoun County, Virginia. I've been doing that for the past seven years. And uh, this is I'm new to this school and new to this position. But uh, yeah, I've been teaching middle school history and was very excited to meet you at Teach Better and to continue this conversation since then. I had a great time at Teach Better. I don't know about you. I had a six and a half hour drive that turned into eight hours because of rain and traffic. But I didn't mind it because I used that time to reflect, listen to podcasts, reflect on those podcasts. But I was just overly excited to get to a conference that I've been trying to go to since 2019. So how was your drive? Or You drove, right? Yeah, yeah, we drove. Uh, I drove with one of my really good friends, Pat Hauseman, who you, know, you also got to interact with at the conference. He's one of my best friends. And so uh, we presented in 2019 together. We worked together for five years before that. We hopped in my styling Honda CRV and started started driving over the Appalachian Mountains and uh, our drive was not nearly as severe as yours you know we you take the whole way west we got to go north and then west a little bit our drive was really only like five hours and it, it stayed the most part five hours minus some rain you got hit by it the whole way right yeah pretty much uh the whole way until I got to Ohio and then the the blue bright skies opened up like it was an omen of what was to come I guess somewhere over the rainbow right somewhere over the rainbow I actually sung it to myself <laughs> in the car it's funny that you read my mind like that. The first night was a social gathering. It was networking. Uh, we went to a bar and grill. How many people do you think were there? I got to think that there were, whenever I looked on the sketch, it said there were 88 people signed up. There were definitely more than that. I would think like closer to 120. Yeah, I was thinking somewhere between 120, 150. I know yeah. the the small area in the back was packed and I was happy to find the outdoors. Like I opened <laughs> up the door I went out there, some people uh, followed, some people were already out there, and we had some great conversations. I was able to meet you there. Yeah. I was able to meet uh, Patrick and Steph and Tara all there. Yeah. So Stephanie Howe, who's been a guest on the show, uh, wrote a book with Tara Ruckman. They were there. Patrick and you were first time meets. I've, to be honest with you, I saw your face on Twitter a couple of times, but we've never had any formal conversation. You put me to the test right away. After five minutes of meeting you, you were like, what's my name? And I was like, I'm <laughs> terrible. I'm not well, I feel like person. it needs, I feel like we need the greater context of that. It's because whenever I had met Stephanie for the first time at the conference and she said my name and then 10 minutes later, she was, she said something along the lines of, you know, you have a face I recognize, but what's your name again? I was like, Stephanie, we just met and you already forgot my name. I just need to see so, if I was memorable. I, I came a little bit later. I'm going to tell you this. <laughs> They always say, don't smile before Thanksgiving with your class. My goal is always to remember one, either their first or last name before Thanksgiving. Because that's, that's how terrible I am with names. Usually I give people <laughs> nicknames and stuff. But you know what? I am working on it. And to be honest with you, second day, I nailed your name every single time. I know. I, I 100%. Did. 100% on the second day. So the second day we started getting into keynotes and speakers and sessions and authors and ed tech and different educational groups and things like that. To be honest with you, it didn't disappoint, at least in my mind. This podcast is a proud member of the Teach Better Podcast Network. Better today, better tomorrow, and the podcast to get you there. You can find out more at teachbetter.com slash podcast. Now let's get back to the episode. Throughout the conference, some of the first people we met during the first night, which included Phil Strunk, Patrick Hossaman, Stephanie Howe, myself, Ariel Jankford, 
and Tara Ruckman. We would all do these impromptu recordings. I had a podcast set up for Podcasters Row that allowed me to get a mobile microphone made out of the mixer just by adding an attachment. Stephanie Howe saw it in my hand. I wasn't really sure if we were going to record, but she took over. She did a phenomenal job. And we're going to play some of these recordings periodically through this episode. So here's our first one. Take it away, Stephanie. Hello, everyone. We're here at Teach Better 2022. Is that the right year? I think so. I keep hearing that 2020, 2019, wait, 2020, <laughs> 2019 was amazing, but the hype is still here, isn't it, Phil? I would, I would totally agree with you. Definitely a family feel. Family? Oh. Family feel, yeah. I thought we were just besties. I mean, you know, we're family here. Okay. We take we're care of each other, right? Off. All What's right. We're yeah, we're all leveling up a little we went bit. From right? friend, we went from friends to family really quickly here at Teach Better 2022. Now we're about to break some bread over lunch and really get this family feel going. All right. So, what is um, the name of your school and your role? Oh, well, I'm a history teacher at Riverbend Middle School in Loudoun County, Virginia. And tell us about the lesson that you did last year with the Boston Tea Party. Oh, well, you know, I taught about the Boston Tea Party, spoke about it, and then I said there's one thing to learn about a tea party, there's another thing to have one. So I pulled out a big bucket, put some water in it, gave them all bags of tea, and we talked about how it was an act of protest. And so I had them think of something that they would like to protest about school or life in general, come up, declare what it was, and throw their tea in in the harbor. All right, so we're um, just at the start of Teach Better, Uh uh but are there any takeaways yet? I would say I'm learning a lot from a lot of really great people about the importance of taking risks. Anything for you? Oh, you're passing it back to me? Oh, um, yes, I went to CJ Reynolds' session and it was all about sparkling. And I cannot wait to implement some of these engaging strategies. Yeah, Tara, what about, yeah, Tara, what about you? Um, I went to a HOPE School of HOPE session, which I really loved, and creating a HOPE ambassador for those students that have experienced trauma in the classroom and grouping students based on what type of HOPE assessment they have come out with. Putting a high HOPE student with a low HOPE student to have that HOPE ambassador build HOPE within the classroom for students that have experienced trauma. All right, and Patrick, what is your big takeaway from Teach Better 22 so far? So far for me, it's trying to break out of my comfort zone and be less of an introvert, which I'm slowly working at with the help of Phil, and also collecting as much resources as I can to send back to my teachers. All right, and Ariel, what is your takeaway from Teach Better 22 so far? I just came out of a session with Tom, and he was talking about standards-based grading, which is like right at the heart of the work that we're doing in my building. And so I um, got some really good ideas on how to help teachers with their mindset of traditional grading and moving them towards standards-based grading. Thanks, Steph, for taking us through that exercise. It was really cool to see how many different takeaways we had with such a small group of people. I'm sure if we would have brought more people into this inner circle of trust, uh, which anyone could have joined that, we would not have kept anyone out of that. But I'm sure we would have got a whole bunch of different viewpoints on takeaways from sessions and things, but this is still early on in the conference. Phil, what were you looking to get out of this conference? What's one thing that you were hoping to take away from the Teach Better 22? First and foremost, one of the things I love about this conference is that it really feels like, and I put this on Twitter, it feels like if Disney World had an ed conference, it would be Teach Better. So it's a great pep rally for educators to realize the good things that they're doing. Something that I didn't realize I needed to hear until it was said was actually during that opening keynote by Chad Ostrowski. And he was talking about the collective trauma that has been the last few years in terms of dealing with education in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, different reactions to that, and the a lot of loss that happened along the way. And so it was just nice to, as he was going through all those things, just sitting there and thinking like, you know, we really did go through a lot. And starting from that place and then realizing that we don't want to go back to normal, we want to do better. I feel like it helped put me in the right in the right headspace. I think if you look at the timeline of teacher burnout, it's usually, you know, you start the year on a real strong high. You had a couple months, you know, quote unquote off. Now you're meeting your students. Everything's great. You're in the honeymoon phase. Usually toward the end of September, early October, that honeymoon phase starts to dip down. You start to hit some doldrums. 
I feel like Teach Better was a nice little shot in the arm to, to jolt us up. And I think day one with Chad's message talking about, you know, working to be better, but also recognizing where we have been these past few years was very impactful for me. And then, like I've already seen a pay dividend since I've been back in, in the classroom this week. I agree with you. I feel like Chad's speech was like a sh- double shot of espresso straight to the vein. <laughs> I mean, that's what I felt like. And yeah, one thing that he talked about, but he didn't really bring this word out, and that's grace. He talked about how we went through this trauma and everything like that, but really, we gave ourselves some grace to deal with that trauma. We gave ourselves grace in getting through how we teach during that pandemic. And then we gave ourselves some grace about how we treated students and how we tried to help them figure their own feelings out. But now he also kind of inadvertently said that, all right, we're done with this grace period. You like what I did there? Yeah. I, I like that. I like that. So do I. That's clever. I give myself <laughs> five points. Yeah, you know, uh, you can 10 while you're at it. So this grace period, now that we've gone through this, all right, it's time to get back into it. It's it's time to not put a pinpoint in any particular spot where we're supposed to be, and let's just get where we need to be. Right. Like, we need to start pushing forward. We need to start getting ourselves moving. The only way to get back to normal is work towards getting ourselves moving and getting back accustomed to things or the pace of things pre-pandemic. So. I, I'm so glad that you mentioned Chad, Chad's uh, speech and everything. It was awesome. Ray did awesome mm-hmm. opening up the conference, getting everyone done. I wish that everyone could have Teach Better at their opening ceremonies every year because I feel mm-hmm. like really that conference did pep me up. And I myself was feeling burnout, not from this year, but from years past. But I have this new, I don't know, a new vision, a new place where I want to be. I want to go somewhere. And I want to take my students and my my district there. And I want to give them a piece of that. So hopefully this podcast episode, when I go talk to people about it, that will also bring it there. So, all right. First day presentations. What What is your biggest takeaway from your presentations? Oh, let's see. First day, I went to Kristen Nan. Uh, session all about like taking gambles, taking risks. And we, and we hear a lot of conversations about the significance of taking risks in our roles of education. But one of the things that was said in that session was about the importance of a simple thank you. And one of the things that we needed to do was we needed to thank somebody who had encouraged us to take a risk. And so as I was sitting there reflecting on like, who is somebody in particular that I can think of to like thank for putting in a a risk recently? Because full disclosure, Eric, I am not always the biggest risk taker. But I thought of my principal and how he had reached out to me and said, like, you know, are you looking for a history gig? And he had an opening. That job was a little further than I wanted to drive originally. But I decided, you know what, I'm going to like give it a shot and, and see what happens. And so uh, we learned about how uh, Dr. J.C. Maslick had written a thank you note to Kristen's family for uh, supporting her throughout the, the year. So I sat and I wrote a thank you to my principal, just realizing, you know, this was a risk and I wouldn't have done it without his encouragement. And and now I'm at a school where I'm exceedingly happy. I've got amazing students, a great staff that I get to work with each day. And uh, that that was a session where it gave me a a reflection of how can I be more grateful every day? I feel like a lot of times around the water cooler and it's so cliche, but it's also true. There's so much complaining. How can we reverse that narrative and be a little bit more positive and uplifting instead? I think that's a great message, and I I feel like that goes a long way, uh, those thank yous. For me, uh, I'm going to take that, and I'm also going to just throw this out there. Like The first person that I met at Teach Better that I didn't formally meet was uh, Josh Stamper. One of my favorite things to do is is just watch him operate. Like This guy, I I always say Josh Stamper and Rochelle Danae Poth, I think you know who that is as well. It's not fair because they get 30 hours a day to our 24. They do so much. I don't know how they pack it in to everything. And one thing, you know, Josh was an administrator and now he's full time with Teach Better. But one of the things that I love about him and I loved observing about him is just the way that he delegates. All right. He does. It's not bossy. I don't know how he does it. It's it's a skill that you could have. He'll ask you to go do something. And then, you know, he'll be like, not worried about it. He knows it's going to get done. And yeah. then at some point in time, if he walks by and it got done, he'll he'll make a choice to come find you and be like, hey, you did a nice job. I really appreciate you. 
And that that right there, that's like your verbal thank you. Mm -hmm. And that right there goes a long way. I, I mean, I am part of the Teach Better Podcast Network, but I'm not an ambassador. I'm not part of the team or anything like that. But uh, Dana Goodyear told me, hey, we're over here unloading. If you, I, I saw you at the hotel, uh, or I heard that you checking in at the hotel, if you want to come over. And I was super appreciative because it allowed me to get comfortable with the with the space before yeah. it actually started. So I went over there. I met some friendly faces, some Twitter profile pictures that I once knew. <laughs> and, you know, I just, I just helped out. And it was a great time. So yeah. my big takeaway from the first day is the people. The sure. people are amazing. Uh, the Teach Better team, amazing. I mean, I watched Dave Schmidt. I didn't, that's my big regret, other than not being able to talk to Jeff Gargas. Um, it was probably not to have a conversation with Dave, but uh, Dave Schmidt is part of the Teach Better team. He's a runner and he was just running the whole time. I had Dave on my podcast back whenever I was still podcasting and he was just as nice there as he was in person just as he is on Twitter. And that's that's something that I don't think enough people recognize about this Teach Better team. I think a lot of times they see how uplifting they are on social media and like, they can't possibly be like that in person. No, they, they really are. They, they really are yeah. great individuals. Yeah, they respect everyone's value. And I, right. I really appreciate that about them. And at one point in time on the second day, I think we were cleaning up. Dave just had a second to himself. He was carrying around his big gallon of water because he is a runner and and I know runners are very uh, connected to their water and how much they drink. It's almost a science. I think he has a marathon coming up. I just looked over at him. And I said, hey, I didn't get to introduce myself. My name's Eric Geis. He goes, I know who you are. And he gave me a smile, gave me a pat on the back. To be honest with you, that's all. Like, I know that the dude is crazy busy. And I just appreciated the smile and the yeah. little pat on the back. Like, you know, I, I have a feeling we'll catch up later at some point. But right. the, the man is so quick witted and smart, and that comes through on everything that he does, his books, everything. So really appreciated him getting to meet him. You know, there are others, you, Phil, Tara. I mean, we all hung out yeah. throughout the conference, which was very special, too, because now I feel like I have another guy I can just go to and ask a question like 20 minutes before we started recording. Yo, you want to record? Cool. Let's go. <laughs> and we're doing it. All right. So the end of the first day, I mean, the themes are going to be kind of the same throughout the conference, but let's get into the second day a little bit. The second day keynotes. I think that was the <sighs> greatest I've, keynote entrance ever. Not just entrance. Yeah. I mean, Mickey, keynote two was amazing. Mickey but... Smith Jr. Brought it. All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll give awesome. you, I'll give you a little story here. Like I was sitting down behind you for five minutes and then I, I just can't sit for that long. So I went to the back of the room. Mickey Smith Jr. comes blaring this saxophone. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger on the saxophone. I'm just like, man, he is making that butter melt. Uh -huh. He is. I mean, he's thrown down. So I got my phone out. I started recording it. The next thing I know, I'm looking down. I'm 39 minutes into the recording. <laughs> Tell me the last time you, you held your phone out in front of you for 39 minutes and you did not feel the pain. Never. That's just the testament to how so sweet that presentation was. I, his yeah. message of hearing student sounds, mm -hmm. paying attention to the detail around you, all that stuff. His encouragement, his stories about his grandma, grandmother. I'm grandmother, sorry. Grandmother, yeah, yeah. <laughs> grandmother. I mean, that that's all educational gold there. Yeah. So for me, that was my biggest takeaway on the second day. Yeah, easily. That was. That, I think that was probably everybody's. I went to another great session, though, by Michael Jennings about the ABCs of rapport. And I think I told you at the conference, I initially was like, well, how is he going to really make the distinction between rapport and relationships? But I was like, you know, what? I'll, I'll bite. I'll, I'll see what it's all about. I don't know the last time that I went to a conference session with so many practical takeaways for, like, how I interact with a student on a regular basis. And I don't know how quickly, outside of your session with Stephanie, and Michael's, I've used conference stuff so quickly in a classroom either. You know, I was sitting down with a kid who was just going through some stuff Monday, and I was just trying to think back to some of the simple lessons about, you know, actually hearing my student through things, using uh, or using we and us instead of I and you, things that I thought I already did, but just being even more intentional about making sure I am to make sure that they recognize this is a class community. I loved it. 
there was a lot of there was a lot of gold on on day two. I, I enjoyed presenting. I was thankful that you were there. Thank you for that. And uh, you know, Steph and I threw down pretty hard. I was just super excited to be there to present, get my feet wet. I'll probably put in for one or two in the next time I I head out to the conference, as long as Very they nice. have it. I was super happy with that. But what was kind of cool about when I went to a session and after we presented ours, they were intimate sessions. There were only 25 people in. But when you have to compete with Rochelle, Danae Poth, and <laughs> and Mickey Smith Jr. at the same time, you expect to have a smaller group. But 25 is still a pretty good number for a non-EdTech conference. Like it wasn't a specifically an EdTech conference. What I really liked is out of those 25 people, I was able to meet up with a lot of those people at the networking event, which was super cool. But before we get into the networking event, I just want to play back Stephanie's, actually, I think on the second day, I'm not sure. I'm going to have to go back and re-listen to it, but I believe you had more of the mic the second day. It was a combination between you and Steph. So I want to make sure we have a time to incorporate that in here because I, I got to throw Patrick out there on this, but he kind of hit the home run at the end. It was like, you right. guys are thinking about this all wrong. This is, you know, the point I want to make. And I was kind of picking on him in a playful way, but he really takes everything in and he he thinks about it, reflects on it. And then when it's his turn, he comes out and he, he doesn't say much, but when he says stuff, it is absolute gold. Right. I mean, we're using gold a lot here, but I don't, I, I can't say silver. That's second best. I'm not going bronze. <laughs> I'm going gold because, you know, Patrick just did a nice job of putting things in perspective and giving a different perspective. So I'm going to play that audio now. It's kind of fun. We're goofy. We're silly. Uh, during this whole time, we're making fun of each other, which is awesome. So, Phil, take it away. I was in a session, and there was this great question being asked. If you had a million dollars to either make a million-dollar maker space or a million-dollar outdoor classroom, which would you pick and why? So, Eric, your thoughts? I would make a maker space, no doubt, because we can make other stuff, including that outdoor classroom. I just said the same thing before you walked up. I said we can create a greenhouse and bring indoors. So at first I said let's try to invest the million dollars and then have double the amount of money and do both. But I was reading too much into it, I was told. So now we're going to go with the maker space and then take a portion of that money and bring it in. And I said makerspace because the weather in Kansas is terrible. And I don't really want an outdoor classroom where it's hot and humid one month and cold and rainy and snowy the next. And there's bugs and kids are distracted by every little thing. Yeah, and I'm the same. Makerspace is definitely the way to go um, because kids can create that outdoor space if we want to. And I said that way before Tara or Eric. Um, so... <laughs> But it just allows students to be creative and go and think outside the box and sparkle. I'll be the lone outlier, I guess, and I'm going to go outdoor classroom, which could also house a makerspace, especially for a million dollars, because a lot of our kids never get outside, especially after elementary. So that outside is like a forbidden place. So I think we'd recapture some excitement if we got them outside. See, I told you, Phil, Patrick is a genius. All right, let's get into the second night of networking. We go to an Irish bar. For me, once again, this was a great time for me to come out of my shell a little bit, go meet people that I normally probably wouldn't have talked to. I know the second night I actually got to meet uh, Rochelle face-to-face. -face. I believe it was the second night. It might, I don't know. They're kind of blending together. Um, but the second networking event, it's Friday night. Uh, I got to meet Rochelle. I got to meet um, Dave Burgess, which was cool. Uh, he had a very soft shirt. They had a shirt contest, which was very memorable to me because they were both awesome shirts. But I gave it to Dave because of his quote on his shirt, which was, be yourself, they'll forgive you later or something <laughs> kind of along those lines. And you know what? I feel like you could wear that shirt very, very well as, as well because you're just a happy guy. You talk, you demand presence. Which is all I'm loud, I think, is what you're saying. I'm very loud. That's, I didn't want to be, you know, loud about you being loud, but yes, <laughs> you are loud and in a good way. I mean, that as a compliment, but those are some of the people I got to meet the second night. What about you? Yeah, so night two, Pat and I were pretty tired. And so uh, we, we decided, you know, we just want to get together and let's just do like a guy's thing. 
he just had a, a kid nine months ago. And so between him being a new father and, and my son turned to haven't gotten to hang out together too much, just us. So we went out to the wing warehouse on our own and just kind of collaborated and, and chatted and had some delicious, delicious wings. Uh, got the Parmesan garlic ones, which I think you got the next night there whenever I was messaging you about it. I, I did. They were, they were fantastic. The, uh, it was just a good time. That's a great atmosphere there. They definitely treated us pretty well uh, over there. I've, I yeah. just felt like the food was amazing. Uh, but the second night, I didn't hang out for too terribly long. I wanted to get back, get a good night's rest. It brings us to our last day of the conference. All right, so I guess it's time to play our final reflections of the conference. It's only fitting that since Stephanie started us off at the conference recording these little audio bits, it was only fitting that she was the one that kind of closed out the conference. And here are some of our final recaps and takeaways from the conference. Go ahead, Stephanie. We're back at Teach Better 2022. And we are giving our final recap just because some people have to go home to their lovely kids and some people are staying an extra night because they want to. Asking me what my favorite session was, I do feel is unfair, but uh, let me just say this has been another spectacular day at Teach Better 22. Would you compare Teach Better 22 to 19? Like what was better? What I would was... say 22 is better. Why is that? Yeah, I think that we've made a lot more connections with people I think that it still has that small community vibe and, you know, I would say family, but you would laugh at me if I would say that. So I, I will refrain for now and, uh, and just say I've enjoyed meeting Ariel and Tara, who is unfortunately not here today. You and, and Eric, it's been fantastic. I know Patrick. <laughs> we literally drove here together. Did you enjoy being stuck with me? Did you enjoy that experience? Or no? Yeah. Pat's one of my best friends. Of course I did. <laughs> All right, Ariel. What is I think the overall, um, you know, saying that Mickey kept saying this morning was, what's your sound? And I think everything from every session has that resonating, what is my sound? What is the vibe that I can create in my building with students and teachers? And um, I have lots of great ideas. I just spent the last session with Michelle Moore walking through, identifying um, an area to work on and we use the design thinking process and I feel like that almost wrapped up the whole conference for me like it helped me really define you know how can I make my sound heard in my building for a positive impact so yeah I'm super excited. All right during the keynote Bill gave a look about the sounds can you make that sound for us? Ah! <laughs> that is Bill's sound. Does anyone else have a sound here? No? Patrick, what is your biggest right now? So my biggest takeaway just in general is community. I think one of the biggest things that sets this conference apart is the community feel. You don't have a ton of huge sessions. Even the keynote session's not huge. Like Phil said, like everybody said, you actually get to know people versus just high and by, run to another session, sprint down a giant hallway. And when I was in Dr. Neil Gupta's session, one of his things was thinking about your classroom not necessarily as your classroom as a teacher, but it's all of your students' classrooms as well. So how can you make that a space that's inviting, safe for them, welcomes them every day, just like we wanted this conference to be? And I think the conference has absolutely lived up to that. Yes, connections. Connections is huge. All right, Eric, what is your biggest takeaway from Teach Better 22? One thing is, is it is possible to go meet somebody online collaborate with them on a couple of virtual things and then be able to come here and act like you know each other and be able to pull off a successful session. I would say that, Phil, would you? Yeah, it was one of my favorites, easily. Absolutely. I learned new things. I picked up new things, and the vibe between the two was there. All right, and we're going to close this out one more time with Phil's sound. Ah! So, Teach Better 2023, will you be there? thousand percent. I'm going to do my best. I'll do my best. I'll be there. Absolutely. All right. We'll see you in 2023.
Hey everybody, I just wanted to take the time real quick to introduce to you a newer educational resource for teachers. All right, this is an ed tech tool in my mind. It's going to help you do what you do a little bit better and maybe save you some time. This resource is called educationblueprint.org. It allows you to build your network of teachers and resources all within one platform. All you have to do is go sign up, upload some resources that other teachers can use. I like to think about this is giving back to to the profession and then go and take a look at some resources that other teachers put on there for you to use what i really like about this resource is that we have some other ed tech tools that are very good for curation they'll give you sets of questions or activities and things like that but there's some downfalls one some of these uh, platforms you have to pay for the things that you use the other thing is is typically there's no rating system so if I go on and I use a podcasting guide, after I download it and use it, I get to rate that guide. So if it's something that I would recommend for others, I would rate it high. And that really allows the better resources to slide to the top. Educationblueprint.org. Go check it out. Get involved with another community. Let's help everybody just save time and collaborate on your own time. So check out educationblueprint.org. Anything else that you want to add before we wrap this one up? I mean, I just really enjoyed getting to to meet you, Eric, finding out that you live like maybe 20 minutes from where my family is or where my parents are and getting to talk about a lot of different things. I stole your ideas for the choice pyramid that you shared at the conference and already working that in class. And, you know, like I like I said, these are friendships that will last forever. And as Stephanie Howe would, I'm sure, love to tease me for you know, you really do become family at these things, which is weird since it's only for a weekend, but you really do build those lasting connections, which is awesome. So are you family or your besties? Because you guys can't make up your yeah, mind. Yeah, you know, I can't figure that out. I, I'm going to let her figure that out at Teach Better 23, and she'll tell me. I, I know that, uh, you know, Patrick was a little jealous when you guys started to claim yourself as besties. Like, <laughs> he was like, well, what, what am I then? What am I? I was like, Patrick, you and I are besties. There you they go. Could go do, they could go do their thing, but... <laughs> Hey, uh, Phil, thank you so much for coming in, uh, joining me for this recording. I think it's a great sediment to, you know, what we were able to experience at Teach Better. I would highly recommend anybody uh, out there to go take a look at Teach Better, see what they have to offer. Go check out the podcast on the Teach Better Podcast Network. Also connect with some of the ambassadors and the speakers if you have any questions, because Got to meet a whole bunch of those people, and they are amazing. All right, until next time. Next time I meet up, if you're you know going to visit your parents, make sure you give me a call. I'll, I'll okay. meet up with you, and we'll we'll get some wings at a different wing place. That's right on. not eight hours away, but thanks a lot. And that's gonna wrap it up for this extra bonus golden episode of Got Tech the podcast. <laughs>